In our first session, we talked about distilling the thousands of worldviews and religions uh, out there today uh, into three major worldview categories. We talked about animism, which says essentially that everything is spiritual. We talked about uh, materialism or atheism, which says that everything is physical. And then, of course, we talked about biblical Christianity. And so we're just thinking in worldview categories. And what we want to do now is, is begin to think at a worldview level. You know, just take this basic question, um, how do I apply worldview to something like belief in God? And I think in a world committed to relativism, uh, and again, relativism, you, you know, what's true for you may or may not be true for me. Truth is fluid. It's in flux as far as a lot of people are concerned. But in a world committed to relativism, the question of why believe in God uh, makes sense. At the same time, if you think about it, it really makes no sense to deny that there is a God or that the God of the Bible exists. Uh, I remember uh, sometime back, one of the major news outlets here uh, was talking about ads, advertisements that uh, were proclaiming or, or asking this question, why believe in a God? And then they were making this statement, just be good for goodness sake. And of course, that's a phrase for goodness sake, but just be good for the sake of goodness, for the sake of being good. Don't believe in God, just be good. And uh, those ads were uh, running in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and they were on buses and you know, I think they were running at Christmas time or something like that. And uh, they were sponsored by the American Humanist Association. And, um, you know, they were essentially implying that those who believe in God are not thinking rationally. Uh, they're not thinking critically. And so in light of that particular uh, implication, uh, there's a few questions that, that seem to be raised in my mind. First, uh, is it rational to believe in God? And secondly, can we philosophically affirm being good simply for the sake of being good? Or, or do we have to have a reason to be good? Um, and then thirdly, why believe in God? So is it rational to believe in God? Um, can we philosophically affirm being good simply for the sake of being good? And why believe in God? So first, is it rational to believe in God? Well, obviously, and may, maybe not so obviously. I mean, we're Christians, so to us, yes. But I'll just say it this way. The answer is yes. Uh, it, it is rational to believe in God. In fact, the truth of the matter is it's irrational, philosophically speaking, logically speaking. It's irrational to deny God. Uh, the typical humanist or the typical atheist denies the existence of God on philosophical grounds uh, rooted in naturalism. And, and of course, naturalism, as we've said before, is the notion that all that exists um, in the physical world um, we can observe with our, our senses. And, and that's all that exists. Um, the atheist asserts uh, with absolute certainty there is no God. And the question then is, well, how do you know there is no God? And of course, what he'll do then is cite a lack of evidence. Because again, all we can know, uh, we have to be able to perceive with our senses and all that exists is in the, the universe, which is a closed system. It's a box. So you can't go outside the box. And the only way that you can know whether or not something is real is if you can observe it, again, with one of the five senses. And so they're going to say, you know, they say there is no God. You say, how do you know there is no God? Well, there's no evidence. There's a lack of evidence. That's what they're going to do. He's never seen God. That's essentially what he's saying. But on his worldview, now we're thinking at a worldview level, on his worldview, he does not know for a fact that there is no God because he has not investigated every square inch of the universe. Uh, the reality is God might be hiding behind Jupiter or something. He doesn't know that. He hasn't investigated that. Uh, and, and of course, as such, he's being philosophically inconsistent. And so his rejection of God at that point is irrational in, in philosophical terms. 
He doesn't know. He hasn't investigated every square inch of the universe, so he's being irrational. He's actually completely uncertain as to whether or not there is a God or as to whether or not he can know that there is a God. Um, he has limited knowledge and limited investigative ability. But on a Christian worldview, uh, we may assert with absolute philosophical certainty that there is a God. Uh, we certainly acquire knowledge through investigation, uh, just like atheists do, uh, but we also acquire knowledge by way of revelation. Uh, there's, a, there's another source of knowledge, as it were. And God has revealed Himself to us, and, and we can say there is a God. Now, we cannot prove uh, God specifically but our worldview is completely consistent and it's therefore completely rational. Uh, it's, it's logical. Um, so the second question then, of course, is, well, can we philosophically affirm being good, and I'm going to tie these two things together, by the way, can we philosophically affirm being good simply for the sake of being good? Well, the American Humanist Association defines humanism as a progressive philosophy of life that without theism affirms our responsibility to lead ethical lives of value to self and to humanity. Now here's the question. On what basis can one affirm responsibility to lead ethical lives of value to self and humanity apart from God? You can't do it. For example, on a naturalistic worldview, um, we are here by accident, right? You know, there was nothing, not just empty space or darkness. There was nothing, and then there was something. As one young man said, uh, there was nothing, and then it exploded. That's, that's the naturalist explanation as to how we got here. And then, of course, evolutionary processes took over. But if, if there was nothing, and contemplate that reality of nothing, and by the way, remember the Bible says that God hung the world on nothing, but think about the concept of nothing, and if there was nothing, and then all of a sudden there was something, then, then something random happened. Now, of course, we know it's impossible, but nevertheless, that's their theory, that's their view. And so, if something random happened, we're here by accident, and if we're here by accident, the logical conclusion is that we have no purpose. So now we're talking about, you know, questions of origin. Where do we come from? Well, we're an accident. Well, why are we here? Well, we're for an accident, then there's no real reason for us to be here. There's no meaning to life. And so we have no purpose. And then that, you know, I'm talking about ultimate questions now, origin, uh, meaning, um, ethics. How do I live now that I am here? Well, if you're just an accident, and life has no real meaning or purpose, then it doesn't matter how you live now that you are here. There's no standard of right and wrong because, you know, on that evolutionary naturalistic worldview, there's no God. So there's no standard of, of right or wrong. And then, of course, when we die, that's it. We cease to exist. That's, that's the question of destiny, and I'm just talking about their worldview. Well, without purpose or a standard... You know, if life has no meaning, and if there's no absolute standard of right and wrong, it's philosophically inconsistent to say that person should be good. And then you've got the question, well, who defines good on such a worldview? You know, if we're here by accidents, life has no meaning, no standard of right and wrong, who says what's good? Who says what's bad? Now we're back into relativism, which of course is where most of our Western world is. Uh, they call it different things, but that's where they are. The relativist obviously has, has these philosophical problems with his or her worldview, just like the naturalist does. If there's no standard, no one can define good for another. Someone might say that our, our survival depends on being good. But then again, on that worldview, who says survival is good? And again, what is good? I mean, these are questions that they, that they can't answer. But obviously, on a Christian worldview... We're specially created by God. So that's where we come from, origin. So we're created by God. And now we have purpose because our purpose is wrapped up in God. We exist to glorify Him. So therefore, life has meaning. The meaning of life is glorify God. And uh, how do I live now that I'm here? What's my ethical standard? Well, it's God's Word. 
And then, of course, destiny. When, when we die, there's the judgment, and, and those who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ will be with Him forever. But uh, again, we're created by God. We're created with purpose. We're given a standard by which to live. What we do in this life matters in eternity. And that alone, if you think about it, is a rational basis <coughs> Excuse me, for being good. God's standard um, uh, and our destiny, that's a rational basis for being good. So then the question is, well, why believe in God? And obviously, we've already answered the question, but, but let me just draw out a few implications that might uh, highlight uh, further why we should believe in God. <coughs> Excuse me. First, a belief in God, uh, as we've said, provides the only rational basis for goodness, uh, morality, ethics, or the rule of law. These things make no sense without a universal standard. So if there's no God, no standard, none of those things make any sense. Uh, secondly, uh, a belief in God provides the only rational explanation for metaphysical dynamics like laws of logic, the mind, or language. The evolutionist, the naturalist, conceives again, conceives uh, of the universe as a box. It's a closed system. There's nothing beyond the physical, nothing spiritual, no God. Everything that there is, we can observe with our five senses. Well, the evolutionist certainly believes in laws of logic, but they're not physical. They're, they're immaterial. Where do they come from? There's a distinction between our brain, which is physical, and our mind, which is immaterial. What uh, is non-physical? What, what is the mind, and how, and how do you explain it on an evolutionary worldview? How do you explain language and communication and all of those things that we all affirm? We know they exist, but we can't justify them on a purely physical, in-the-box worldview. Where do these things come from on that naturalistic worldview? Third, uh, a belief in God provides the only rational basis for the scientific method. Um, the scientific method is, is, is rooted in um, the uniformity of nature, and things happen the same way over and over again. Uh, presupposes a universe of design and order, not one that came to be by chance or by accident. You know, there was an accident, there was chaos, and now there's order. That doesn't even make sense. That's irrational. Uh, we know that something can't come from nothing. We know that order can't come from chaos. We know that life can't come from non-life. And yet they say that, that that just happened. And yet now we live in this orderly universe. And, and, and again, contradictions abound. Uh, fourth, a belief in God provides the only rational basis for things like liberty, freedom, uh, and justice for all. Uh, such things are rooted in uh, the justice of God. Apart from Him, think about it now, if there is no God, then those in power make the rules. The might makes right, that kind of uh, reality. Uh, Long-term freedom for all people it is rooted in, in, in the fact that all people are created in the image of God, that, that all people have, for example, an essential right to life by virtue of, uh, of God saying, Thou shalt not murder. And so long-term freedom for all people can only be sustained in a society rooted in a Christian worldview. If you don't have that Christian worldview, then eventually uh, those in power are going to gonna put to death whoever they want, whether it's babies in the womb or whether it's uh, ethnic cleansing or genocide or whatever the case may be. When the Christian worldview goes, then liberty goes with it. So we're just talking about some implications uh, why you should believe in God and, 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 you know, things that make no sense apart from the reality of God. Uh, fifthly, I think we could say a belief in God provides the only rational answers to ultimate questions, which I was referring to earlier, uh, including how we got here, what the purpose and meaning of life is, how we have to live now, what happens when we die. Uh, apart from God, um, you, you essentially have two options. You just have hedonism, however you define it, you know, just what did Paul say? Eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we die. I mean, Paul is making a massively 
philosophical statement, isn't he? He's saying if there is no Jesus, if there is no resurrection from the dead, you know, he didn't say, let's go check out Buddhism. You know, we were wrong. Let's go check out what the Sikhs are up to. Let's, let's, let's check out that Baal worship. Let's look at the Roman pantheon or the Greek pantheon. Or, or maybe I'll just go back to Judaism, you know, if, if Jesus isn't raised from the dead. He didn't say any of that. He understands that if there is no Jesus having been raised from the dead, then once we die, it's over. That's it. And so if, if, if that's the case, then it makes no sense to, to worry about uh, ethics or, you know, law or, or anything. Now, that might suit you, might be your cup of tea, as it were, but essentially he just says you might as well eat, drink, and be merry, you know, and, and to some that would mean a partying lifestyle. To others, it would just mean, hey, I just want to make myself as comfortable as I can while I'm here because tomorrow we die. Well... If, if there is no God, you know, that's your first option, hedonism, individual personal hedonism. Your second option is despair. Um, you might as well kill yourself, basically. So those are the only logical conclusions if there is no God. Um, I would just add this, lastly, uh, and we could say more, but I'll just add this. A belief in God provides the only rational basis to seek salvation uh, for your soul. When you come face to face with the futility of everything apart from God, uh, then, then, then you, you need to embrace the gospel. And um, we understand that God has to work in the heart, and you know, we can't argue anyone into heaven, but we're just thinking at a worldview level here. And the reality is that it's irrational not to believe in God. It's philosophically rational to believe in God. Uh, to, to tell someone, you know, a $40,000 ad campaign from the American Humanist Association, tell people to be good for goodness sake, makes no sense if there is no God. Um, and so why believe in God? Because uh, life doesn't even make sense apart from his reality. So... It's the humanist who needs a dose of critical thinking, not the Christian. And, and the Bible says as much, Colossians 2, 3, in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge.